Hey guys, and welcome back to another Factorio workshop. As always, I am joined by Madzuri. Greetings. And today is uh, it's a bit of a doozy. We have a ton of nuclear builds uh, we're going to go over. You guys seem to really like the way we compared uh, different Red Circuit builds last time. So we've taken pretty much all of the nuclear builds that we've had submitted so far, and we've laid them out here. Um, including a special one by Zuri, um, which we'll start with here in just a second. But uh, yeah, I've mabled, uh, labeled the map with the name of everyone who's made these as we go over them. And uh, blueprints, as always, for all of them will be in the description. But we can go ahead and get started here, and I'll let you just completely explain your Zuri and, uh, and what these special things are. Yes, I convinced Ken to make me a mod for these, actually. They heat up water to 140 and then pump water into the heat exchangers and that makes the steam, which is a lot like how you'd actually do it. You'd, you'd preheat the water and pressurize it and then put it into the boilers or the heat exchangers. Right. And I calibrate it for four reactors. You need an offshore pump off of each line and it's calibrated perfectly for six offshore pumps. And it uses every single bit of water and I meticulously removed all of the flow loops. So there we go. Yeah, very nice. So then, uh, cause this is pretty much exactly like your other build was the very first one that I went over, uh, when you weren't here, except the other one was, I think only two reactors. Yes, it was two reactors and this is four and I've had to double up the heat pipe width because of the change to the way heat pipes work. Right, because the, the way that they changed it, so the heat pipes essentially, um, they fixed it so that it doesn't matter what order you place them, but that kind of also made it so that they have a max length now at which they can actually transmit you know, full heat. So we have to double them up here. Um, but yeah, so this build, um, this produces 698 megawatts, which is uh, definitely not bad. And you've made it very compact, which is nice. And unfortunately, yes, it does rely on fuel. If you run out of any of the types of fuel, the entire build fails. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm aware, but I wanted my perfect ratios. So here we go. <laughs> so here we go. Yep. So, you know, trade-offs. And um, just a quick thing I've noticed. It looks like maybe it'd be possible to make it more compact. Could you move these preheaters um, closer to these turbines? Because there's this, like, two-tile space here. Just move the whole thing closer in. Yeah, you can move it in quite a bit. I had left room for heat pipes to move on the outside, but I got rid of those because I don't need them. Okay. So yeah, you can actually compact it three more tiles in on both sides and put underground belts under the part of the underground pipe that sticks out. Yeah, definitely. So uh, very good. I like it. Um, you know, the fuel could be an issue, but yeah, there we go. So... Yeah, that's Zuri's. And then now we move on to uh, one submitted by Thrall. And this is a, a smaller one, and I actually find it interesting. He's put in solar panels. Now, I don't know if this is, this is maybe just to, to jumpstart it, like the inserters and stuff, do you think? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the bootstrap startup. All right, very cool. So I'm gonna, I, we forgot to put a passive power drain on this, but... This thing looks like it now produces about 256 megawatts, which, I mean, for this size of build, which is really quite small, is uh, definitely not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I really like the uh, the bootstrapping with the solar panels. Um, that way you don't have to connect it to a pre-existing network to actually have it work, or, or start working, rather. And I'm just watching here, making sure nothing, like, runs out, but... Yeah, it looks pretty good. These are have really low steam, some of these heat exchangers, but the power overall does not seem to be declining, so that's a good sign. Uh, and then we have we have this monster. This this one is uh, submitted by Jas uh, Jaxome, and I'll let you go over this one, Zuri. We can maybe just alternate, and plus this one is quite large. Well, sadly, with the changes to the heat pipes, this one do no longer works. Does the heat it? pipes are too long. So yeah, it, I think of the power graph history on the one hour mark. Oh, you'll see, you'll see where it was, drop. and it, 
yeah, decays to less than half of what it was. Yeah, so unfortunately this one was submitted before the heat pipe changes, you know, sometimes that just happens, you know, nothing you can really do, but uh, this, you know, this was, I think, about a 1.4-ish gigawatt build, and yeah, unfortunately due to the heat pipe changes, it now does not work fully, but it was worth showing, because it is a very good build, and it does incorporate the um, Covrex process as well in it, which is pretty cool. Yes, it does. Sweet. So there's that. And uh, then we have this one, which is submitted by Nerves. And this, uh, so these steam tank, these tanks all around are for measuring steam, which I assume is, I haven't really messed with smarts for um, nuclear at all. I assume this is for like telling when to insert fuel or not. I believe so. It's kind of difficult to reach the middle of this thing, though. It's super compact. Yeah, I would say it, that's almost a blessing and a curse. It's very compact, but at the same time, you can't actually walk into it, which I would say is a bit of a disadvantage. Um, but yeah, so it looks to be good. I don't. I guess I didn't hook up a passive thing to this either. <laughs> it's a, There was a lot of builds to do here. Now this actually, no, this seems to have just stopped completely. And I wish I knew where that was. Uh, I don't, though. It looks to me like there's no water. Because there's actually things here. I didn't realize. It looks like maybe you're supposed to input water from the side as well. Oh, yeah. this We're only feeding water to a quarter of this, evidently. Whoops. Well, but I guess that that would be one issue I'd bring up is this would require you to either stick it on an island or run pipes all around the outside. Yeah, it was a bit of a whoops on our part, but I didn't realize that it had four sides we had to feed water from. Well, it's rotationally symmetrical. It should have occurred to me, but didn't. Right, so... <laughs> um, so yeah, you would feed water from all of these sides. I think maybe unless... Pipe length becomes an issue. I should be able to just very quickly bootstrap this here. Pipe length might become an issue, but we'll see. So, yeah, this guy is, um, it is, it is very compact, which is good. However, I, I personally would like a way to be able to walk on the inside of it. You know, just in case something breaks. Um, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> we'll just uh, pull that back a little bit. So there we go. Sorry about this, guys. We uh, didn't didn't realize that. That's our bad. So this one come out to here. And uh, yeah, so there we go. This guy does require a bit of finagling getting these pipes to all hook up but so we'll let that work and let's uh let's move on to the next one while that gets gets going uh okay, so, okay. yeah you can go over this one this one is quite complicated um but very cool i haven't gotten it to use the timer correctly there are directions down here but input fuel first press a then tear up but evidently, we did something wrong, or we connected it wrong, and it's... I can't seem to get this, uh, the smart system to work. Yeah, so... Um, I think there were instructions with this, but we didn't quite have time to read through all of them. So, if you want to mess with this, um, again, blueprint in the description, but it is very cool because it also comes with, um, an alarm that will go off. It'll, uh ring a nice sound with a speaker and also show an alert in your alert bar and on the map um, if it runs out of fuel. Haha. -ha. Sweet. So there's your alert that displays. That's really nice. You know, let you know when you've run out of fuel. And this guy uh, is a 1.1 gigawatt setup, so definitely not bad. Unfortunately, I'm not very fond of detecting steam levels with storage tanks mm -hmm. I, the flow mechanics are just too glitchy still i'm not fond of trying to use them for it 
Yeah, I, I think. I'd have yeah, to e agree. Yeah, even though the accumulator farms are so much more expensive and so much bigger than these, you know, power density, I still prefer those over fields of storage tanks. Mm hmm Yeah, the flow and fluid mechanics are still a little bit wonky. So there's that, that one, and then now we move on to uh, one submitted by Mobius1, and that last one was submitted by uh, Distel Zombie. Um, so this one by Mobius1, it's um, very, very simple, very simplistic, which I like personally, because the smarts just, I, you know, I mean, you know me, I'm not very good at the circuit stuff, but this one's very simplistic, which I like, and it also, which we haven't seen yet, is he used his... Uh, Two steam engines here. I'm guessing to just round out the ratio because this probably wasn't a perfect, um, like round number. So he's used these to round it out. Yes, these these steam engines are a very cute addition to this build. I like it. Yeah, yeah, me too. And uh, and it's 1.4 gigawatts, which is certainly not bad. And this this is just a comparison. I'm not necessarily saying one is straight up better or worse than the other, but if you compare this one to the one we just went over, this is kind of the I guess you could say size cost of using smarts, right? Because the one to the left is 1.1 gigawatts. This one is 1.4 gigawatts and noticeably smaller because it doesn't require uh, all these tanks. So j just a quick note. I mean, if you obviously smarts are good because you won't, you know, waste fuel and stuff. So, uh, but just a comparison that if you do want more of a simplistic build, it does uh, reduce the size quite a lot as well. Sometimes the smartest builds are the dumbest ones. <laughs> and sometimes it, it just makes it more complicated than it needs to be. Um, but uh, yeah, we have these last two both submitted by Vader. And uh, I'll let you cover these last two if you'd like, sir. Right, oh, i got to make sure the pipes are still working. We were concerned the heat was dropping. Yeah, it does look like the power output, though, is still what it should be. Yeah, it still works fine. It's a... Uh... Another 1.1 gigawatt build with exactly eight reactors. It's got these nice fields of uh, steam turbines. Mm -hmm. uh, I see a lot of the 3-2 pipe inputs. Yeah. And I like that there are RoboPorts built into it right next to the reactors. That's something I wish more builds had, actually. Oh, yeah, up here on the top and bottom. It is very nice. Yeah. A couple of them are missing these, and it's a little hard to fit ports in the build around it. Mm-hmm. That is true. Yeah, so as far as I could tell, this limits the water flow rate coming in. It doesn't need any pump shenanigans. Unlike this next one, which I think you need the pump shenanigans for it to work at all. It's, it's trying to push too much water through, mm -hmm. and it works fine. It's just you're reducing the, what, CPU cost efficiency, if you want to call it that. Right. And some of the power is being eaten by the offshore, or the, the small pumps. I guess they're just pumps now. Yeah. They're not a lot. 30 kilowatts is like nothing. Yeah, not for this, because this thing generates a whopping 2.4 gigawatts, and it does seem to be steady as well, because we did hook this up to a drain um, before we even started, so if it was going to fail, I think it would have failed by now. Yeah, it's not going to fail. This is uh, doing really good. Yeah, so if you need a ton of power, this is a very good build, and uh, obviously does work with the latest heat mechanic, um, heat pipe mechanics, and um, it also has this solar panel thing built into kind of bootstrap jumpstart it which i really like although interestingly it i don't know that these would really fully do enough because oh no it was not nearly enough when i started this up it it was very slow starting up because yeah these won't what? even power the pumps yeah 60 kilowatts that's like four pumps mm -hmm. and two pumps yeah part of the re of the inserters yeah, so this one you would have to probably connect to another power network to jumpstart, um, but, but there you go. So this one was a bit longer, quite a lot to go over, but we did figure we do have all these reactor builds that would be good to kind of compare and contrast them. Um, and they do all work as of this video, except for that um, one, I believe it was Jack Soames that unfortunately was submitted before the heat pipe changes, so it is not currently working. 
But uh, I think that'll do it. Do you have any thoughts on any of these or, or anything else to add, Zuri? No, I'm pretty sure we covered everything. These are some massive builds, though. Yeah, I mean, n nuclear builds are, are pretty big. Uh, I mean, a lot of these seem to be about as compact as you can make them. It, you know, obviously there's room to improve almost anywhere, but they're not, like, intentionally gigantic. It's just kind of the nature, I think. But, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed blueprints for all of these down in the description, even the one that doesn't work in case you want some inspiration or something. Um, and Zuri's, it is worth noting, um, I will put a blueprint, but you will need the preheater mod um, for it to work, which I will also include a link to. It is on the mod portal. And, uh, and yeah, I believe that does it. So until next time, we will catch you guys later, and we uh, we hope you enjoyed. Love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. But uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Later. <laughs>